Sayonara, Shredhead. This is your look at the new NECA Toys Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time, Raphael. The bodacious line of time-traveling turtles returns with NECA's release of Turtles in Time Series 2. Wave 2 consists of Shredder, Leatherhead, Mikey, and Raph. Raphael comes included with his pair of Psy, interchangeable hands, hoverboard, and display stand. Before we go meeting and greeting Raphael, the first thing we're going to do is calculate how tall the figure stands. Like with other turtle releases of the Turtles in Time line, uh, Raphael is going to be the same figure that we've gotten before in the cartoon releases. Don't worry, we'll do some size comparisons in a second. And while I'm also calculating out the measurements for you, the viewing audience, I'd like to send out a big mad props. Thanks to the folks over at NECA Toys who provided the sample that we're having a look at in this review. Raphael stands 5.5, or another way of saying that, 5.5 inches in height. And switching that to centimeters, then you're looking at the figure standing 14 centimeters exactly. Let's get going with some comparisons. We'll bring in Raphael. This was the darker color scheme Raphael from the Turtles cartoon line. And following that up, there was also the merchandise colored turtles, which are basically the turtles that you would see usually on t-shirts and different ways to advertise the cartoon brand. Some prefer the lighter colored turtles. I prefer myself the darker color scheme turtles. But you can see that they're pretty much all the exact same figure. This allows the collector to handpick which turtle they actually want to have in their collection. Or for many of us fans of the NECA Turtles line, we'll probably be inclined to pick up all of them and just display them in different places of the room. Other comparisons we can certainly bring in. Here is Leatherhead. We'll just slip him around to the back there because he's certainly going to be a lot taller than Raphael and just recently looked at here is also the shredder so I can give you guys an idea uh, the turtles are about two-thirds the heights of both shredder and leatherhead a fitting size comparison you certainly would want the turtles to be a little bit smaller than some of the bad guys behind them Checking out the figure's accessories now, he comes included, like the others we've looked at before, with his own hover sled. These are really fun, and I love that they include these. The initial lineup of Turtles in Time figures didn't incl include these stands that I'm aware of, so these hoverboards are exclusive now to these releases. Very colorful, I must say. It's still done in that lime green color. You can see there's that singular peg that's going to attach, or... Raphael's foot is at least going to attach to that. And they've also added some little bit of highlights there on the sides, on the side thrusters as well. Speaking of thrusters, also located here on the back, you have three of them propelling the sled across the seas. I do have a little bit of what looks to be almost like glue residual here on the side. I'm not really sure what's happened, but the thrusters are all intact, and that's all that really matters to me. Uh, flip it upside down. Of course, you've got the little fin there, and there's a notable peg hole on the underside. You probably already know where that's going to be going to. Comes included also with a clear stand. The stand of pegs just on the underside here, like that, just to apply a little bit of pressure. And not only do you have yourself a standee for the hover sled, but you also have the means to tilt it. This is all ball jointed, so you can move this back and forth, up and down. And I really like that. I like the idea that you can pose it simply not just standing straight like this, but you can get a little bit more creative when it comes to displaying it. Have it slightly tilted on the side if you want to. Put that to the side. Raphael also comes included with a pair of interchangeable, swappable hands. It sort of seems like he's flipping the bird, but actually this is his sigh wielding hands, or sort of has, there you go, sort of like pointing hands as well. You can take the sigh, and the sigh actually just fit in between his thumb and his fingers, just like that. It sort of has it in a different way of wielding the sigh than simply just having him gripping it in his hands. Something rather interesting also to mention about the sigh, and that's not size plural. Plural of psi is still psi. If you look at the detailing on them, they're much more blockier. It wasn't until actually that I pulled out the one that came included with the cartoon turtles that I did notice it's not the same psi at all. Look at that. 
Very interesting. I had no idea. I mean, I would have suspected, if anything, that they probably would have reused the exact same mold. But then going back and looking at the material, the video game gameplay, the sides are a little bit more blockier. So rather fancy the idea that they've actually just given us a brand new mold of Psy. It's not to say really that you couldn't even just use this Psy for the displaying of any one of your other cartoon turtles. Why not? So that's really interesting, the fact that he does come with a different version of the Psy that his cartoon counterparts didn't have in the first place. Uh, like I said, the other accessories he comes included with is those interchangeable hands. To change out the hands, you're simply just going to grab the figure's forearm, wiggle the ball joints or the peg joint out, just like that. And then from there, find the appropriate hand. It's a little more difficult with turtles because all their fingers are stubby and they look like little sausages. But you're just going to wiggle this back on. And like I said, you can either use that as a pointing hand, like so, or... Again, you can go back and bring the psi in, and it just sort of wedges in between the finger and the thumb, just like that. That's kind of, I like that, I like that. You will want to still be careful because the prongs I've noticed on the psi, this plastic feels a little bit more rigid. I'd be more suspecting the idea that these could potentially break if you're not careful. So of course, be very careful when you're just putting these in his hand. Don't apply too much pressure. Certainly don't apply too much pressure on the side prongs of the psi because that would be the one thing that most definitely would be breaking on it. Raph continues the trend of the colors that they apply to these Turtles in Time figures going away from just the straight lining of shadow that they did tend to do on the earlier released Turtles. Instead they go the route now of blocking this making it very pixelated both in his arms, his legs, and even on his shell as well. As a straight-out comparison, we can bring in, again, that cartoon Raphael. Some call this the merchandise color scheme of Raphael. I kind of consider these the turtles later into the series, where the darker colored turtles were more so the first handful of episodes, with that noted line that ran across the front of its nose. Remember those. I kind of like that other color scheme myself, but there's still something to be said about the lighter lime green color. And this one's pretty close in color scheme to the Turtles in Time release of Raphael, though this one is still notably lighter. One thing that was interesting also about comparing the two side to side is that they dilated the pupils to be much larger on the Turtles in Time release of Raphael versus his original cartoon self. Short of that, and short of the blocky, more pixelated style of shadowing, there's nothing really that changes from one turtle to the other. Although it looks like really from the side, his face is a little wider, but I think it's just more my eyes playing tricks on me. We flip the turtles around to the back and the shells are exactly the same, though the color scheme does drastically change from one to the other. And they also, the cartoon version of Raphael had some additional panel lining added to areas around his musculature and areas around his shell. This Raphael doesn't have as much of that and get, again, doing away with that completely in favor of this more blocky looking pixelated color scheme. Uh, paint on this guy is really quite clean except for one area and this would be only be specific I'm sure to my own. I had a little bit of paint that was on the shell and then I realized where that paint may have came from was the back of the bandana. Sure enough somewhere along the lines there was a little bit I guess what wet paint on the underside of the bandana and maybe it probably just got stuck to the shell when it was packaged. So I have a little bit of paint that has been removed. Granted, yes, I'm probably not going to be seeing it like this, and nor will I be seeing it when I have the bandana. Well, I guess I probably would be seeing it just a little bit down on the bottom corner here. The bandana also does allow you to have the option to rotate that up. This is basically just pegged in place. So you can actually move this up or upright if you wanted to. Like if you wanted to have them zimming by on their hover sleds, you would imagine like the air would be hitting the back of the bandana and blowing this up as a result of it. Uh, not really, again, much has changed to design and the aesthetics of time Turtles in Time Raphael. Pretty much once you have gotten the first release Turtles, you're pretty much getting the exact same thing on this release in favor now of going the more video game inspired colors. Even like the shadowing on the underside of his neck. Yes, you still get that little V of uh, panel lining that was happened to be on this one. But they also have added some additional shadowing there. All done in those blocky little cubes of color. Uh, the front also, let's just do one last comparison. 
Uh, the discoloration, or I should say the coloration on the belt does change. Let me just bring in the other Raphael so you can see. This one, the initial one, was all done in more of a light gray, with the R of the Raphael being done in a slightly dark gray. When it then came to the lighter colored turtles, they did away with that in favor of an all-black background and a noted lighter gray R in the center. They almost sort of went back to basics when it came to the turtles in time release, going back now to an all-gray and an all-gray R on the inside there as well. We'll move the figure out of the way here for a second. Again, quickly looking at some of the details on this particular piece, not much really has changed. But again, it's the idea of either picking up the regular release turtles, which I love picking up myself, or picking up the turtles in time releases, which I love picking up myself as well. It's just a matter of how you enjoy the color scheme on these good looking molds. The molds themselves are great on these figures and giving us different variations to how the turtles are presented. In this case, the turtles in time release. Again, it just gives you a same looking raft, just presented slightly different from the others. So looking at Raphael's articulation, his head rotates all the way around. It hinges up, it hinges down, and of course rocks back and forth as well. We've already discussed the bandana just a little bit. We can go back and talk about that just one more time. The bandana is, because it's pegged in place, allows it to be rotated all the way around. It doesn't really quite hinge up and down. You can sort of see, there it is right there, how it's been pegged into the back of the bandana. It's basically just a peg system. The arms hinge out and not quite at a full 90 degree angle bend. Generally with a lot of these turtle figures, I'm not getting full 90 degree angle bends. Actually, this shoulder is a little on the tighter side. So you could take a little bit of a uh, hair dry, uh, dryer, which I've seen some people actually do. Take just a hair dryer and heat up that joint if you want to avoid altogether submerging in hot water. And that cert certainly should help just to kind of loosen those joints up a little bit. This arm isn't so much the problem. I can, again, get to about an 85, 80 degree angle bend. Uh, the arms also, also do rotate all the way around. He does have a swivel on the bicep, so you can rotate the arm all the way around if you wanted to. He has a single bend in the elbow. I actually thought they had double hinges on the elbows, but I think they only have a single hinge. But still, that allows that forearm to ro rotate back and forth. And Raphael's hands also rotate all the way around, whatever hand you, of course, decide to display him with. Then, of course, you have the art articulation on the lower leg, basically like this, this top piece right here. Sorry, the arm being up is slightly distracting to me. This section right here from basically like the belt up is pegged in place via a ball joint. So that can rotate back and forth this way. And you got a little bit of, well, you can swivel it back and forth that way as well. Then for Raph's legs, the legs split out. There's the inner workings of the legs. I don't know why I feel always so compelled to show you the inner workings of legs. But there they are right there. There's actually a little bit of a ratcheted joint there too. So one thing about that is it keeps the legs stiff and prevents the legs from getting loose. A nice touch on NECA's part. The legs rotate forward. The legs rotate back. He has a double bend at the knee, which also allows the lower leg to slightly rotate. Not just much, but it really is rotating at the top here. It's not really rotating at the calf down below. And then finally, the feet rotate all the way around. They rot They bend down. They bend up. And you can also pivot them back and forth. Raphael has the noted peg holes on the undersides of his feet. We basically are more there for the hover sled. But I guess there's nothing to say necessarily that you can't display Raphael with uh, a regular display stand if you want to have him off of the sea levels of Turtles in Time. Lastly, we'll just bring in the other turtles so again you can see the comparison between them. I like each one of these for all their own different reasons. I think my favorite using the mold of Raphael, let me just center these a little bit more, there we go. I think my favorite of the three using the exact same mold is still this one right here. I love the dark olive colors, that swamp color that they used for the earlier turtles. Short of me actually just going in there with a marker and drawing a line down the middle of their nose. Maybe that might be something that NECA may release down the road. But it's my favorite so far of the Raphaels. I still like the lighter color green that this one comes presented with. But again, like the charm is still there for the Turtles in Time release. Even though, again, they're using the exact same mold across the board, NECA's doing enough different things with each one of them that warrant their own reasonings for being picked up.
NECA has gotten a fair bit of mileage out of these turtle molds, having now released them, I guess technically four times if you count the San Diego Comic-Con releases. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's not a critique necessarily to the fact that they go back to the well and pull out another reason to release these turtles. In fact, all of them share the same mold, yes, but they're all different in design. The paint scheme are also different as well. So when it comes to displaying these turtles for myself, I'm usually inclined to display them by category, like the darker color scheme turtles. I like to have displayed on their own, and I don't really put them with anything else. When we eventually do get ourselves Splinter from the cartoon releases, I'm probably going to be putting Splinter, April O'Neil, and then the dark color scheme turtles all together, and kind of just have them displayed like that. The lighter colored turtles, I'll probably then be displaying in a diorama scene, maybe against the shred head and a couple of his minions. And then of course the turtles in time releases, I keep all completely on their own and I keep all those same like figures together. So the new released shredder that we just recently had a look at will be displayed against the turtles and time turtles. So again, like I'm not really putting them all together in the first place where I would really notice more. So the fact that the mold's been used again and again and again, it really still boils down to the fact that you can be able to display these pieces in their own unique dioramas. Some people may even abandon the idea of getting the cartoon turtles and just want to go directly right to the Turtles in Time releases. And that's, again, the fun part of these is that you can pick your collection based on the stuff that NECA is putting out. If you don't like the Turtles in Time releases, you don't have to pick them up. Some people may like the Turtles in Time releases over their cartoon counterparts. Either way, though, even though Raphael technically is a figure that we've gotten before in one way, shape, or form, he's doing things still at least different than the ones before. He comes also included with his sled, and he comes with uniquely sculpted Psy as well, something I didn't realize would have been the case until, of course, displaying them side to side with one another. Psy to Psy to one another. See what I did there? Either way, though, a nice-looking release of... Raphael, certainly from the Turtles in Time releases, I'm going to display this one with the previously looked at Leonardo, previously looked at Donatello, and previously looked at Leatherhead and Shredder. The only turtle that's still missing from this quartet is Michelangelo, and his review will be coming up shortly. Let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think of the Turtles in Time Raphael, and if you have been collecting the Turtles figures. Which way have you been collecting them? Have you been collecting the turtles from the cartoon line? Or have you been collecting them from the turtles in timeline? Or like myself, you've been collecting both lines. I always like reading your comments down below. If you're new to the channel and liking the content you're seeing, consider the idea of hitting that subscribe button down below, turning that friendly notification bell on so that you'll know when new videos are popping up to this channel. And again, just FYI, know that Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when you'll find new videos showing up on this channel. And sort of, I've tipped my hat, but we are going to be, of course, having a look at Michelangelo. His review will be right around the corner. Again, a big thank you to the folks over at NECA Toys that provided the samples of the Turtles in Time figures that we've been looking at over these reviews. Keep your peepers peeled to this channel again, Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, as there's certainly going to be a lot of stuff coming your way. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.